Hey everyone, welcome to our introduction to character animation tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to introduce you briefly to a number of the different uh, animation tools in Crazy Talk Animator 2, as well as uh, give you a little bit of a work uh, walkthrough of our recommended uh, workflow here. Um, so let's take a look at this diagram first. Uh, you can see on the top we have a 3D motion. Uh, this is generally what we're going to apply with a G2 character to start off. Um, I'm going to do that in this tutorial here. And from then on you can do your uh, 3D motion key editing, uh, multi-angle keys and motion layer keys and all that stuff. And then you can uh, do your looping and time warp uh, once you have the uh, motion you like. And from then on, it's recommended that you kind of uh, flatten your 3D motion um, or you collect a clip to a 2D motion, whatever you prefer. And then from that point, uh, your final um, little uh, step is to do some 2D editing of your motion. All right, so let's get into uh, Crazy Talk Animator here. And I want to go to my Actor tab, and I'm going to introduce, uh, bring in one of my characters, uh, Saul here. Uh, we're going to animate uh, Saul. There he is. Uh, so let's bring him into our scene here. And with Saul, we're going to start off with a 3D motion, just like in the uh, recommended workflow there. So let's uh, zoom in on Saul. Um, let's go to the uh, animation tab here. And in motion and 3D motions, I'm going to choose uh, working motion. So we're going to go down here. And then we're going to do, use some uh, thinking motions here. So we have think start. I'm going to just double click that and apply it to our uh, character here. So Saul is beginning to think. And then we're going to be using a think loop right here. So we're going to be applying three clips in a row, and then we're going to be applying this uh, think end with the uh, Eureka. All right, so there we have our uh, three motion clips. So let's press uh, F3 and go into the timeline here. Uh, in the timeline, I'm going to open my 3D motion track, and you can see here that I have my uh, three clips. Let's just zoom out our timeline a little bit here. So you can see I have one, two, and three. So those are my uh, three motion clips that are... Uh, combined together. Now because I don't really want to individually edit any of these uh, clips, I think they are uh, fine the way they are, I want this to be a continuous motion. So right away what I can do is I can just double click on my motion track here and that will select all of the clips in my motion track. Then I can right click and I want to select flatten motion clips. So this is where the flatten motion clip in the workflow diagram comes in. So now we have this one uh, neat uh, motion clip that is just uh, um, smoothly blended together. And that's basically where we're going to start from here. Now you can also notice that this clip is uh, actually blue in color uh, and the 3D angle and the 3D motion layer tracks are white below it. Uh, that indicates it's a 3D motion. Uh, if it's a 2D motion, the clip itself will be gray in the same motion track and the 3D angle and 3D motion layer tracks below that will also be grayed out. Now the first thing I want to do is go into my motion key editing. Um, so let's uh, see. As so once you can see Paul here or saw a little better and let's go to our 3d motion key editor here you can also use the M hotkey and we'll just uh, click that and you'll see this uh, we'll close down our timeline for now and you can see this uh, motion key editor UI will appear on the right hand side here now with any G G2 characters you can actually rotate them to uh, any any um, angle that you'd like um, they have 10 different angle profiles if we chose the same motion from 135 degrees for example you can see that he's kind of uh, thinking there and then Aha, I've got it. So you can uh, you can basically play the same motion from uh, any angle, and that's the advantage of these 3D motions. So what I want to do is uh, we'll start from the uh, you know the zero degree, the normal uh, angle here, and then what I want to do is when he's uh, doing his eureka moment, I want him to be kind of facing the camera. Uh, so let's go and uh, press F3 and go into our timeline one more time. Let's bring that uh, over here, and with any motion key edit, you'll probably want to start with a uh, keyframe. Um, in your track, in your 3D motion layer track. So I'm going to start about uh, here um, and I'm going to just go into my 3D motion layer track and I can just double click in that track to create a keyframe. And there you go, you can see the key right there. And at this point, when he's uh, at the uh, extent of his uh, Eureka there, I can just select his uh, head bone in the motion key editor here and use the E hotkey and that will give me a rotate gizmo. And then I can just move that to the left right here. So then at this point when he's doing the Eureka he's gonna be looking at the camera. And you can see at this point however um, his head turns a little bit too far because we did that um, uh, turning a rotating of the head earlier on. So what I can do at this point here is near the end of my clip I can just go here and I can actually use this reset and that will reset his pose to what what the pose was in the original motion clip. So anything that was in, a, in the original motion clip uh, any editing we've done will now be reset to the normal clip and now we should have the head pointing towards the camera the entire time. 
Okay, so that's your basic uh, motion key editing. Uh, you can do that with uh, with any 3D motion. So let's uh, go into our 2D motion layer editing now. Um, I'm going to go here, and you can see this uh, is our 2D motion layer editing. But first of all, we're going to uh, edit our sprites first. So sprite changing is right here, and I'm going to select that. And you should see our sprite, our sprite exchange, uh, sprite editor appear on the right hand side here. And you can see you can change a number of different sprites uh, with your character. So let's close down our 3D motion track now, so we won't be needing that anymore, and go into 2D motion layer editing. So you can see in 2D motion layer editing, we have our body transform, body sprite, and body deform, and also our layer as well. Now we're going to talk. We're going to talk about the uh, sprites first. Uh, now what I want to do is with his Eureka, we're going to have him thinking, 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 and then at this point here, I want him to kind of be uh, pointing his finger. So we're just going to do a quick sprite change with his finger. And we're going to select that hand right there. And we're going to give him a pointing like that. And so up to there, it's normal sprite change, then pointing finger. And then anyway, he's coming down to about here. We'll just uh, return that back to a relaxed sprite. And now you can see that we have that simple sprite switching animation. So that's how simple it is to uh, to adjust the sprites um, in, your, in, your, in your character and do some nice little animation like that. Now let's take a look at uh, body transform. So uh, we're going to go back to about here, and I want now I want now to go into our uh, 2D motion key editor here. And you can see in, in motion key editor we have uh, our uh, pose, we have body, face, and deform. Uh, pose is just uh, general movement of the limbs. Body will uh, you know transform and modify the uh, limbs. Uh, the face is for the face. Deform will kind of um, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Let's start off with the body first, however. Uh, for this body, I want to stretch his arm out when he's doing his uh, Eureka point here. So in the body transform, we're, we're going to do the same thing we did with the motion key editor, uh, 3D motion key editor. I want to, in this case, I want to double click in the body transform track to create a keyframe right there. And then at this point, I want to choose my forearm. Normally, we're going to start from the root of the, uh, of the motion, uh, the root of the uh, character rather. So if you're starting from the forearm, or starting from the upper arm, you want to go from the upper arm to the forearm to the hand. In this case, we're only going to be stretching out the forearm a little bit, just like that, um, just to kind of emphasize that uh, pointing. And then we're going to be uh, taking his uh, hand and kind of stretching that out as well, something like that. So you can see now we have the uh, stretchy uh, hands like that. And um, you can see right here it's kind of uh, deforming a little bit weird when it comes back down. So what I want to do is actually just copy this uh, keyframe right here in the body transform track. And let's go over to when his hands coming down. And I'll just paste that. So that'll keep that, uh, st that stretching um, animation for as long as this uh, period between these two keyframes here. And then of course we can go back to the uh, about here and we can use the same uh, reset function and that will reset it back to the original uh, flattened 3D motion clip. So let's take a look at that now. Stretch and then oh, back to normal. So that looks a little bit better than before. So let's go on to the uh, body deform now. So in the deform, let's zoom out a little bit here. In the deform, you can actually just kind of stretch and modify um, the perspective of your um, of your character body parts. So I'm going to go to deform here. And you can see we have a body deform track as well. Now uh, to start my deform, I'm going to also double click in the body deform track Add a keyframe there at the same uh, frame, and then at this point, uh, we're going to actually just do a little bit of uh, deforming on his uh, hand and his arm there. So let's uh, go ahead and do that right now. Uh, we'll start from the uh, forearm. We'll just kind of stretch that out a little bit, something like uh, something like that, and we're going to focus more on the uh, on stretching out the uh, hand here. So when you're doing the body deform, you want to ensure that you keep your um, your body parts close to the original root. Otherwise, you may have some um, some issues with uh, the body parts detaching from each other. So let's try and uh, just uh, stretch this out a little bit like that. And you can see we kind of uh, deform that to a nice, uh, nice large uh, pointing finger. So you want to keep it around the general area. You don't want to kind of move it way over there or something like that. Um, otherwise, you'll have those issues that I mentioned before. So now we have these stretching out like that. And then so you can see now he's it's kind of like doing that. So we don't want it to do that. Of course, we want to do the same thing. So let's go to the uh, body deform, copy that keyframe um, to the point that we want to uh, to about uh, here, and then we want to uh, paste it back down. And then uh, at this point, 
we're going to uh, do the, the same uh, reset. So this should have a nice uh, return back to normal. There you go. So now we have the uh, the body transformed, the body stretching, and everything like that. Uh, so let's take a look at the. Uh, whoops. Let's get his. Make sure we get his uh, arm in the scene there, so we can take a look at that. There we go. There we go. So we get that nice uh, stretching out like that. Um, so it's really emphasizing that uh, point. Now for the last uh, uh, body part, uh, I'm going to uh, or the body editing tool I'm going to use here is the uh, layer editor. So let's go back to the beginning for this, and uh, I'm going to select my layer editor here. Uh, you can also use the L hotkey. So for this one, I'm going to when he's when he's doing his uh, thinking here, I'm going to put his arm, uh, his hand behind his head, almost like he's scratching his head instead of kind of being frustrated um, and putting his hand in front of his head there. So let's take his uh, left um, hand here. And what I can do is I can select his left hand and choose this send to back, this icon right here. And that will send it to the back of the other, the next um, body part that I click. So I'm gonna select send to back and then I'm gonna select his head. And you can see that um, in the layer uh, track here, we get this um, keyframe with the, uh, with the line behind it to uh, indicate how long this layer change is going to take effect. So now you can see he's kind of scratching his head, scratching his head, scratching his head, and then, aha. Uh -huh. So maybe at this point, we can uh, just move the hand back to the front of the head. We don't really need to do that, but uh, um, if, we, if we wanted to do that, we could, uh, we could just you know, select the hand um, in our layer key editor here. And what you can do is just uh, now send it to the front and send it to the front of the head. And then you can see that um, keyframe um, cuts off there in the layer track. So that's basically uh, the general um, tools, the body animation tools that we have in uh, Crazy Talk Animator 2, general introduction to those. Let's take a look at the final animation here now. So kind of scratch his head. Haha. -ha. All right. And um, you also might notice that with our deforming here, uh, at about uh, this point here, you can see that the uh, forearm kind of goes behind the uh, hand there. So we can fix that again with layer editing as well. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, select that. Uh, this time we'll select the uh, forearm. And with the forearm, we can uh, send to the front and send the forearm to the front of the hand. And then that should be uh, fixed right there. There you go. So we don't have that problem anymore. So that's a really quick fix if you ever have any sort of issues like that. And you can just uh, fix it really quickly. So the last thing I'll do here is just do some quick uh, facial animation. So let's uh, close down the layer editor now. We have my character selected. And what I want to do now is go into my motion, or puppet editor rather. So the puppet editor on the left hand side here. And we can toggle between facial and body puppet here. We'll switch to facial puppet here with this top uh, button. And you have a number of different profiles you can select. Um, any, any profile works with uh, any character. Um, these, char these profiles are from uh, previous versions of Crazy Talk. We have Chuck and Gwyn here from iClone as well, as well as this uh, sprite uh, profile. If I selected this one with a happy um, you know, uh, expression, I can preview that and you can see the uh, result right there. But maybe because he's worried at the beginning of his animation, I want to kind of do this. And you can see that uh, we can have more of a worried uh, thinking animation. Or we can even use one of these profiles as well. This uh, woman right here. Um, you can see, hmm. Maybe she's uh, thinking, or even something like this. Uh, you can choose an angry profile. But we'll just stick with this one for now. Uh, maybe this, this angry one right here. Now be aware that when I press preview, and whenever I press space, that's uh, where my cursor is. That's going to be the axis of my uh, uh, facial puppet right there. So if I press space right now, you'll see the axis appears right there. And I can move around the axis, and that will be um, how my animations are created. However, I press preview and I go like over here and press space, then that axis will be over there. So be aware of where you're, um, you know, starting your previews on your scene because you can get uh, different results there. So let's go ahead and add some uh, some worried um, expression at the beginning of his uh, animation here. So let's go ahead and press record. And, then, mm, mm. and at this point, we can actually just uh, do some sprite changing to give him some uh, a, a nice uh, facial animation, or we can do the, the facial puppet as well. Um, I'll just use, use some uh, sprite uh, switching for this one here. We'll close down the uh, puppet editor and go to our uh, sprite switching. And we can select our uh, facial parts here. So let's zoom in really closely on his face. And let's uh, maybe at this point here, haha, we want him to uh, kind of uh, stretch his eyes like that. Oh, maybe not that one. Let's use a happy one like that. And we'll get his mouth as well. His mouth will be most of the expression. And we want to give him a nice uh, smile. 
let's choose uh, this one right here. Haha, that looks like a nice uh, smile expression. And then maybe back to normal about uh, here. Uh, maybe just give him a little grin since he just had a good idea. And we can change his uh, eye to a nice uh, smiley eye as well. Not much different from the other eye, but uh, that'll do. So then we can, uh, you can see the uh, final animation right here. Just kind of thinking, thinking, thinking. Aha! There we go. And at that point, if we want, we can also add some, uh, some auto lip syncing as well. So I'm going to do that as the final touch to this animation here. So let's uh, close down our sprite editor right now. And I'm going to go create a script over here. So I'm going to select Create Script. Uh, for this one, I'm just going to go ahead and record my own voice, uh, since that's the easiest way to do it here. You can also use text-to-speech, um, add in a WAV file or a crazy talk script. Let's go ahead and uh, record my own voice. So I'll just go, hmm, I've got it. Okay, so that'll be probably pretty good. We can just go ahead and, hmm, I've got it. All right, so there you go. We have the uh, final animation right there. And if we want, I can press F3 and go into my timeline. And if the timing um, on your animation is, is not correct, or on your lip syncing is not correct, rather, you can go uh, close down the 2D motion track, and we can go into our uh, face track here. And you can see that the, uh, the voice clip is right here with the audio data. And below that, those are the keyframes that are used for our auto lip syncing. So let's uh, zoom in a little bit and take a look at those. You can see we have... Mm, um, all these keyframes, this K one right here, this uh, IH one right here. I can just double click those if I wanted to switch them and I can move them to uh, any of these. So you can see at this point I'm going, hmm. So maybe I want uh, to have this BMP and then we have, uh, hmm, I've got it. All right, so there you go. That's the uh, animation right there. And if the uh, audio uh, facial clip um, is off as well, you can, you can modify that as well. Move this uh, back and forth. Um, so if I move this over here, for example, hmm. I've got it. All right, so just uh, is it a little bit later uh, with the animations there. Now, uh, it's important to note that the order in which you use the facial animation tools uh, will determine which tools facial animation uh, data will take priority. Uh, for example, if lip sync is done after the facial puppet, uh, the lip sync data for the mouth will overwrite previous facial puppet mouth spray changes. However, facial puppet will not overwrite uh, the lip sync. So generally the recommended workflow uh, that I use for facial animation is uh, do the facial puppet first, um, get your expressions in there, and then add the uh, lip sync after that, and the lip sync will overwrite that uh, facial puppet in, as far as the mouth goes. And then you can uh, clean that up with the uh, spray changes at the end. So that's about it for uh, your introduction to uh, character motion tutorial for Crazy Talk Animator 2. We will have more detailed tutorials on each individual tool and feature uh, in, in later uh, weeks here. So thank you for watching and uh, hopefully you learned something about uh, how to animate your characters uh, in Crazy mm. Talk Animator. I've got it!